Welcome to the Songwriter Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Vidala, and we're going to talk about music theory, lyric writing, creative productivity, inspiration, and more. I'm super excited to have you here, so let's dive into the episode. Hello, friend. So, I was going through some some different uh, subjects that I thought... Oh, these, these would be good things to cover. And we'll end up doing those things in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. Um, sort of some stuff on how to change it up and different ways to sort of explore different, not necessarily genres, but sounds and, and different little experiments you can do to really um, expand your songwriting and also how to sort of um, inspire yourself to be inspired, if that, if that makes any sense. Just different uh, hacks to, to constantly be learning and and improving, and um, and that's not a hit on you know having a specific sound. Um, I've said this before, but um, I'll say it again. If anybody new is here, uh, I'm a huge believer in having a sound and having your artistic identity. Uh, but I also think that you can, you know, you can be variable as well. But for example, say a band like Breaking Benjamin, they're noted for the fact that they have a very consistent sound. And I think that that's a great thing. Like the fact that when I buy the newest Breaking Benjamin album, I know what to expect and I'm not going to get some like techno album or something, which yes, I know we don't use the term techno anymore. Some electronic album, some, some, uh, EDM, um, you know what I mean? Like, like I know what to expect. And it's not going to be a pop album disguised as a rock band. Like, it's going to have their sound. The songs are still new. The songs still, you know, some of them might sound like something that came before. But most of them still sound like a new Breaking Benjamin song. And I love that. So, I'm all for that. But I also think that doing little experiments outside of our comfort zone just expands us as writers. Um... And, you know, you can also release music as different acts. So so for me, like, I had a band before. I'm creating a new band now for some harder rock music. But I also write singer-songwriter stuff. And those two are pretty different. Uh, you know, one's high distortion, guitars, and high notes all the time. Well, who am I kidding? I do high notes all the time, no matter what the genre. But anyway, um, but then I have my singer-songwriter stuff. So that was more information than you needed, but yes, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about probably in some upcoming podcasts. And I tell you all that because we are not doing any of that today. <laughs> and the reason for that is I was just in a, and social media is terrible, but um, because I apparently hate myself or wanted to punish myself, I did get into a Twitter argument with somebody. And it reminded me of a giant pet peeve of mine, which is people who just want to stay the way they are and be validated in that. And, you know, they want to be told, oh, yeah, you're 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 good enough today. Oh, yeah, you understand enough today. And anytime that you say something that makes people feel like maybe they don't know everything about everything that they should, they get all hurt, all hurt and huffy about it. Which is ridiculous, right? Like, so in this specific case, my, my tweet was that, and this uses some hyperbole, but for the most part, I believe it to be true that, um, you know, trying to write songs and trying to be a songwriter without understanding music theory is like, is like using a hammer for, you know, everything construction. So only having a hammer. Now, obviously, that's slight hyperbole, and it's an analogy. So, you know... I can only take it so seriously. But this guy got very insulted by that, probably because he knows nothing about music theory, which I pretty much confirmed because when I sort of called him out on how that probably is true, he called me a, uh, well, I want this podcast to be clean, so I can't tell you what he called me. But he called me a not nice person, we'll say that. Um, so, which is a surefire sign that I was correct, which I knew I was correct by the first tweet he sent back. Because the only people that would ever argue that that like you don't really need music theory are people who don't know music theory because you know exactly what I'm going to rant about today which is not being willing to learn and 
you know, no matter where you are, you should understand that there's always more to learn, right? Like, I'm, I, I know music theory pretty well, and I know that, but there's still more for me to learn in that area, even, or, or things to refresh on that I don't remember because it's so obscure. And you know what? Most of that stuff that I don't remember is not really necessary to what I do. Um, I have a very firm grip on what is useful and necessary as a songwriter. Um, but there's other things, right? So I'm a software developer by day. I'm four years in, and do you think I'm so arrogant as to be like, okay, senior who is, I don't know, 20 years older than me and been doing this for more than three times as long as me? Like, I don't have anything more to learn. I know how to program. Like, yes, I, d I do know how to program. I am a software developer. I've been doing it for four years, uh, not counting college and not counting internships. But four years, I hit my four-year anniversary at my current job. Uh, three days ago, as of this recording. And, you know, it's just arrogant to not know that there's more to learn. And back on the songwriting front, a guy uh, from my church, the worship leader, actually, is a really legit songwriter. His name is uh, Felix. And, you know, so he, he has a number one hit in in the United States that he wrote, um, he has many other top 40s. He was um, got like ASCAP uh, artist of the year, or ASCAP, however you say that, uh, A C or A S C A P. Um, he was called the best German songwriter, um, the greatest German songwriter. Like like he is pretty legit, and um, he uh, reached out to me and was found out I was a songwriter and. Uh, paid me some awesome compliments. I, I don't want to brag on here, but so, but, so I won't get into that. But uh, he said some nice things, which, if he ever listens to this, meant the world to me. So I, I cannot even... It just meant the world to me. And I, I know to him, he probably just thought that he paid me a basic compliment. But um, yeah. But anyway, and I'm supposed to meet with him on Friday. And do you think I'm going to go there? Like, oh, I'm a songwriter. I know what I'm doing. Like... I don't have anything to learn from you. Like, no, I have a ton to learn from him. He's been there. He's done that. He's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only 26. And yes, I've been songwriting for over 10 years. But, you know, I haven't been doing it as, as a profession. I mean, this, this guy was literally paid by record companies to write songs. And, and you know, even regardless of anything of that, like, there's always more to learn. And should I be stubborn and just hold on to my own views, or should I listen to him and and find, learn as much as I can from him? Because because there's just everybody has something to offer, really. But especially somebody who knows more than you. Um, but even regardless of, of that, like just in general, we we shouldn't. Why do we ever want to just be validated where we are? Right? Like, that's just such an arrogance thing. You know what I mean? Like, like I understand that as a software developer, I don't know everything. I understand that as a, as a songwriter, I don't know everything. I understand I'm not the best in the world. You know, as a podcaster, right? <laughs> like, you're listening to me, and, you know, I'm not the greatest podcaster in the world. Or, or, or even remotely close, I'm sure. Um, but, like, you know, I, I have so much to learn. And, and why, why would I... Why would, if I were to talk to another podcaster who's been doing it for a long time or whatever. So let's, let's say Graham Co Cochran. He's the guy from the Recording Revolution. Great stuff. I've been following him for years and years and years. I've spent probably over $1,000 on his different courses. Uh, definitely over $1,000 So on all his different courses. Like, I love his stuff. I trust him. I, I, as much as I feel like I know him, I like him. I'd love to be friends with him. Um, and... And, like, so he's been doing this for a while with, you know, he's done some podcasts and he's done. So, like, why would I not listen and learn from from somebody like that? Why, why, why would I not always want, no matter who the person is, e even if I thought somebody's not even that good, they still have something to share with me. I'm, I have something to learn. It's not even about the other person so much as the fact that we all should constantly be in a position where we don't just, you know, if I, if I said, hey, Graham, why don't, why don't you let me know how I'm doing? You know, how, like, what do you think? Is, is my, how's my podcast? Am I informative? Am I likable? Am I, you know, do I rant too much? 
do, do you think people get too offended by what I say? Uh, did they take some of my humor a little too seriously? Like, do, how does it come across? And he says, you know, oh, no, 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 that's great. Just keep doing what you're doing. Like, no, I like I know that there's things I can improve on. I know there's things I can and should be better at. And I want to learn those things, you know, like we should constantly want to get better. If anything, to me, it's a depressing thing to think, yep, I've reached my peak. There is no better than this. You know what I mean? Like, so why do people want that? So my goal for you is, you know, with this podcast, with any other podcast you may come across, with reading, with blog articles, with, you know, with my blog, you know, any of this, just want to learn. Don't go to someplace just to have your own beliefs confirmed or just to be told that what you already know is enough. That's not what you should want. Why, why would you want that? Like, there's, there's no positive to that because then you're never going to get better. The only way to get better is to be like, you know what? I probably could benefit from learning that. You know what I mean? Like, I could benefit from getting ev- you know better at the piano. I should go back to piano lessons because I took, I don't know, 12... 13, 14, I don't know, around 15 years of classical piano lessons. But I haven't taken classical piano lessons in like eight years or something. I should go back. And I I do want to go back. Right now I don't have a ton of time because of all the different projects I'm doing. But um, it's on my list of things that I will get back to as soon as I clear my schedule just a little bit. Because, you know, I'm not, I mean, I am more than a good enough pianist to do any of the songs I've written so far. And I write some, even some, some complex-ish piano parts uh, for some songs. Nothing, nothing super hard, but, you know, a little challenging for, you know, singing and playing at the same time, maybe. And you know what? I am perfectly good enough for that. But why would I not want to get even better? Because there's many pianists out there that are better pianists than me. There's other people out there who are better teachers of piano to me than I would be a teacher to myself. Um, And that's part of the beauty of lessons. There's sort of that accountability. You know, you don't want to show up to your your lesson the next week without having practiced because then it's kind of embarrassing and you're paying money for it. So, So even on the accountability front, lessons are very important. And I'm not here to pitch any individual thing. So I'm not saying go out and get lessons. I mean, I am. Um, I I think it would benefit pretty much anyone. Um, Or even if you just want to, you know, get, watch online YouTube lessons or whatever, you know, that can be fine too. Um, My my point here is this. You know, that that guy, it, it seemed really obvious, literally from the first tweet. Like, he was just angry that, like, he doesn't understand theory or doesn't know theory, which is fine. You know, like it's, it's fine. It doesn't make him a bad guy. Right. Um, and he was angry that somebody would insinuate or actively say that like, Hey, music theory is important to songwriting because he, I assume is also a songwriter and wants to believe that he's perfectly good as a songwriter as it is. And nobody should tell me that. Blah. And you know, he said stuff like some of the greatest songs were written by people who didn't know music theory. Like, yeah. Okay. And I, and you know, like Terrell Davis had his greatest game as a running back for the Denver Broncos, my favorite team, by the way. If you're a Broncos fan, give me a shout out. Um, you know, when he had a migraine, right? That doesn't mean it's a good idea to play with a migraine. Like, did players the next week say, well, it worked out well for Terrell Davis in that one time, so maybe I should give myself a migraine, however you would do that. Or it's like looking at a professional athlete. Or, you know those people that like they live to 100 years old and some reporters like how did you do it and they're like i don't know i smoked cigarettes and ate a lot of steak like this just in that is not why they survived that age they had good genes they had the luck go their way they didn't get cancer you know there's so many different reasons why that happens that doesn't validate that life choice like just because somebody happened to live to 100 and smoked for 50 years doesn't mean it's a good idea to smoke right like obviously like, it would be stupid to believe otherwise. But this guy's saying, well, you know, it worked out for this one guy, and they wrote a great song. Like, yes, obviously you can write a great song. You can do a lot of things without doing the right thing to get there or without as much understanding as you probably would benefit from. But that doesn't mean anything because there's several questions. One is, you know, first of all, anybody can get 
lucky, right? And then there's just like, okay, let's say a, a great a songwriter wrote five great songs and he knew nothing about music theory. Maybe if he did know about music theory, he would have written 30 great songs. You know, we, we would never know. If anything, I would think that would be the case. And regard, so this idea that like, oh, that proves something. Like, no, it proves, the only thing it proves is you can write a great song without music theory. Just like you can write a great song without being, I don't know, an instrumentalist at all. That doesn't mean that you don't need, or maybe better word, you wouldn't hi- greatly benefit from music theory. Like, th- those are two totally separate discussions. And the only person that would ever say, oh, you don't need music theory to write, is somebody who doesn't know music theory. And I know that because I was a songwriter before I knew music theory. And it was a struggle. It was a struggle. I still remember, there was a song I wrote, the first real song, uh, any of you that are on the email list get the, the background story of this song. Um, but it's called 4-1 Dance. And for the longest time, I'm like, the chorus just doesn't sound quite right with the verses. You know, it didn't seem wrong, wrong, but it just didn't seem quite right. And I learned later, when I learned music theory, oh, it's because the whole rest of my song's in the key of C, and then the chorus is in the key of G, which isn't necessarily wrong, you could do a key change every chorus if you want, but just the basic knowledge of music theory would have fixed that. You know, I, I would have known that, like, this is why it sounds weird. I would have known how to fix it. I might have not even done it that weird, stupid way in the first place. And pre-music theory and post-music theory, world of difference. Like, it's to the point that I, I, I don't even understand how one writes music without music theory outside of like the super dense like well i know that a g chord and a c chord and a d chord sound decent together so i guess i'll do that chord progression like really that's so like it's a fine place to start but is that really where you want to stay don't you want to be able to know why they're good together and what the job of each of them is and it just it just opens up your world to so many more possibilities and, you know, I, I don't just want to pitch music theory here. So back, back to some of the other side points I was making. No matter what it is, even if you got here by accident and you're like, I'm not even interested in songwriting. I'm not a musician. Whatever it is, just don't be that person that just wants to be validated where they are. You should always want to learn. There's always somebody better at you than anything. There's always somebody better than me at everything, Right? And it's arrogant to, to believe otherwise. And it's arrogant to think, I know enough. You should never think, I know enough. It will never happen. It just will never happen. There's always something more to learn. And, and yes, I understand that, like, maybe practically speaking, there's a certain line where, like, the rest doesn't matter, right? Like, I know, for example, what a French chord is in music theory. This just in. A French chord is absolutely, it sounds terrible, first of all, and and it's absolutely worthless for my songwriting. I would never use a French chord. Never, never, never. There's no reason to. I have no interest in doing it. But you know what? I don't mind that because A, it's something that, you know, maybe someday in some way it will be useful. Besides just being a nice little thing to drop, like, oh, I know what an F, a French chord is. Um... But also because that means I went past what was necessary to know, which means I can feel confident that I really do know pretty much everything music theory wise that helps me as a songwriter. Because I, I even went past that with my music theory classes to the point where I was like, okay, we, we, it's gone too far. Like I'm not going to be writing full on classical music. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing music, just, just normal radio friendly music well not always radio friendly but um but there's so many things along the way that I learned that was just so helpful you know just just even understanding like what a four chord is and how it fits into a key or why it is that a g chord sounds good in the key of c like well why is that or 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 why 
you know, a D chord, a D major chord in the key of C sounds like crap. But you're like, oh, it's a major chord. It should sound happy. Well, if you know music theory, you know better than to just think, oh, major equals happy. Like there's just unending difference between knowing and not knowing. So I know I've gone on a long time. This is a long rant. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to write this into a blog post since there's always a, a blog post that goes along with this. Maybe it'll be a rant style too. I don't know. Let me know if you if you like these soapbox tangents. Um because believe me, I can do plenty of them. Um, but 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 I'll finally finally try to close here. Here's the thing: just be open-minded about things and 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 try to learn and expand your tools at all the different things. You know that there's always something more to learn about personal finance. There's always something more to learn about music theory. There's always something more to learn about the instrument you play. There's always something more to learn about being a software developer, you know, whether it be the soft skills or programming or a different programming language, or maybe you're good at front end stuff and not back end stuff, which if you're, which probably sounded weird, but like if, if, (laughs) if you're, you know, a software developer or something, you know what I'm talking about. And if not, you don't. But you know what? You're not a software developer, so it's fine. So construction work, right? Or nursing. Like there's always, no matter what it is you do, whether your hobbies, your job, there's you can always learn more. You can always get better. And don't be that person that says, eh, I know enough. Thanks for listening to the Songwriter Theory Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and tell a friend. If you want to jumpstart your songwriting, be sure to download my free guide on 10 proven ways to start writing a song at songwritertheory.com slash free guide.